Mobile communication faces two main challenges. One has to do with the tremendous success of smartphones and the respective data traffic that is generated by these devices. At the moment, the total traffic that is sent through mobile networks doubles almost every year. In order to address that challenge, we would have to allocate more radio frequency spectrum to these networks, but we simply don't have that spectrum available. So one way to solve that issue would be to make these systems more efficient, more spectrum efficient, which means we squeeze out more bits per hertz bandwidth. This is a challenging task. The second uh, challenge we have is to make these systems more energy efficient. At the moment, we have about 1.5 million cellular radio base stations deployed worldwide, and these base stations consume a lot of energy. The total amount of energy that is consumed by these networks is about equivalent or comparable to that of the entire air traffic. And now what we've done in our lab, we have developed new technology that addresses both of these challenges. And the technology we've developed is called spatial modulation. I'm going to explain to you now how spatial modulation works in principle. For mobile communications, we require a transmit antenna and we would require a receive antenna. And this would define the transmission link and obviously we want to transmit information. Let's assume we want to transmit the first four letters of the alphabet, say A, B, C, D. The way we would transmit that is using signals. And let's assume we have a signal space made of a real part and an imaginary part. What we would do now is we would link these symbols to so-called constellation points in that complex diagram. We would allocate this point as symbol A, symbol B, C, and D. Now we have four different signals and four different constellation points. And it, every time we use that channel, we would transmit only one of these four symbols. So let's assume we have multiple antennas available at the transmitter. So we have a second antenna, a third one, and a fourth one. These antennas are, have unique positions on that antenna array. And let's define or let's exploit that fact in defining the location as a spatial constellation point. So like we have defined signal constellation points, we have defined spatial constellation points now. And we say that, for example, that position here, that first antenna is linked to, again, the same symbol A, the second antenna to symbol B, third C, and the fourth antenna to symbol D. So essentially what we have created now is a three-dimensional constellation diagram. And we can extend that diagram here into a third dimension, it's called space, where we have the antenna constellation points, or spatial constellation points put here. And we repeat that, say this is A, this is B, C, and this is D. Now let's assume we want to transmit a random sequence of symbols. Say we want to transmit B, A, C, C. The way how it works is that we now would group these symbols into pairs of two. This is our first pair. And this is our second pair. And we would define the first symbol as the one that is transmitted in the spatial domain. So we mark it red. And the second symbol in that group would be transmitted in the signal domain. So we mark it blue. The same here. The first symbol would be transmitted in the spatial domain, C. And the second symbol in that group, again, in the signal domain. And now, at every transmission step, we would transmit two symbols instead of only one symbol. For example, at time instance T1, we would transmit B and A simultaneously. At time instance T2, we would transmit the two Cs 
instantaneously. In that way, we have doubled the capacity of the system. So what we have here are the principal block diagrams of spatial modulation and conventional MIMO systems. What we notice is that in spatial modulation we require only a single RF chain, whereas in conventional MIMO systems we require multiple RF chains. What this diagram shows is the energy efficiency versus the ergodic capacity for a system that is composed of eight transmit antennas and one receive antenna. What we notice here is that spatial modulation is significantly more energy efficient compared to all the other MIMO systems. For example, if we take a capacity of 150 megabits per second, spatial modulation achieves more than 1.2 megabits per second per joule, whereas all the other classical MIMO systems achieve only about 0.2 megabits per second per joule. What this diagram shows is a comparison of the relative computational complexity of spatial modulation compared to a conventional MIMO system. On the x-axis we show the number of transmit antennas in the system. If, for example, we look at 128 antennas, we notice that spatial modulation achieves a complexity reduction of about 98%. This is the world's first practical implementation of the spatial modulation principle. Spatial modulation uses multiple transmit antennas to convey extra information bits. In particular, this extra information is encoded in the physical location of the transmitting antenna. As such, it requires no additional bandwidth, yet still results in increased data rates. This makes the system more spectrally efficient. In addition, Spatial modulation activates only a single transmit antenna at any particular transmission instance. This means it requires only a single RF chain. By requiring a single RF chain, despite the number of transmit antennas available, it maintains a constant power usage. This makes spatial modulation particularly well suited for the next generation wireless systems. How does spatial modulation work? Let us look at the implemented system. In particular, Let's assume that we have two transmit antennas. Let's label these two transmit antennas as TX. Now, we have also two receive antennas. Let's label these RX. Spatial modulation works by having only a single antenna broadcasting at any particular instance. So, the path of the rays coming from transmit antenna 1 to the receiver might be this, this, and this. Similarly, the path of the rays coming from transmit antenna 2 might be this, this, or this. By knowing which path the information data used to arrive at the receiver, the receiver can decode which transmit antenna was active. By knowing which transmit antenna was active, it can extract the spatial information of spatial modulation. In this manner, simply by having a physical separation of the antennas, the rays coming from the two antennas take different paths to the receiver. This enables spatial modulation to increase the information data rate and results in a more spectrally efficient system since it requires no additional bandwidth. This is the transmitter for the practical implementation of spatial modulation. It uses two transmit antennas and broadcasts at a frequency of 2.3 gigahertz with a sampling rate of 5 megasamples per second. By using one additional transmit antenna, the data rate of the system is effectively doubled since BPSK modulation is used. On this side, we have the receiver for this demonstration. The receiver recovers the transmitted signal, and here we have the received video. As previously stated, it is important that the paths of the two information data rays are different. However, the paths are not dependent only on the outside environment. Indeed, each component used at the transmitter and receiver is not identical. 
in particular, each has certain imperfections, which make the paths of the rays distinguishable and unique, even when the outside environment is unfavorable. In particular, we can see that if the transmit or receive antennas are brought very close together, there is negligible impact on the received video. This makes spatial modulation particularly well suited for systems with high correlation. From this demonstration, we can see that spatial modulation can be implemented in practice with tangible benefits for future wireless networks. This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.